Hi, this is Ben Betts at HT2. In this short video, I'm going to build on a, a previous entry where I talked about how I could describe a series of events in order to map them to the experience API. And I, I use the events of somebody using Curator, our social learning platform, to base it on. This kind of diagram is the fundamental of what that looked like, moving around this circle to name the different events that occur pre, during, and post a course. So now that I've sort of mapped those events out, I need to think about how I can translate them into XAPI, how I can use the same vocabulary that perhaps others have used before in order to build up a profile of what it is somebody does when they undertake a social learning experience with Curator. So all I've done is I've drawn myself a little table here. Later on, you'll want to represent this in JSON, in code, but to begin with, it's something you can map out on paper. I've just drawn out this simple little template that's not really comprehensive enough to get all of the detail, but will give me a chance at getting some high-level vocabulary put together. So I've given myself a, a profile name, Curator Social Learning, and then I've got these series of columns that I'm going to go across to fill out for each one of the primary events that I highlighted in the previous exercise. So to begin with, I've, I have a little example at the top here of where I'm going to look at the event in question, the verb that I think I should use to represent that event, the activity, the activity type, some context, and if a result was going to be necessary. There are other things like attachments that I might have here, but that's beyond the scope of this video. So for each event in turn, I'm going to write down the number of the event according to my previous work. So first one was 1.1, and the first event that happened in Curator is a learner registration email is sent. So an administrator sends an email to a learner inviting them to join the course. So my first stop is the verb. Where am I going to get a good verb? Now, XAPI allows you to pretty much make up anything you want. There's nothing that's stopping you to define your own verb. And as long as it conforms to the requirements of the specification, which fundamentally says that verb must be qualified with a unique identifier, then that is conformant to the specification. But it's not terribly useful because if everybody defines their own vocabulary, we lose a sense of interoperability. So a lot of the work that you'll see going on in the XAPI community is about bringing the interoperability back to this and controlling the vocabulary that we use. A collection of controlled vocabulary, for want of a better phrase, is known as a profile. And we can actually look at online registries of where people have built profiles before. It's best practice in XAPI to try and use a pre-existing profile. And as a second step, if there is no particular profile that fits the bill, to mix and match from existing profiles to create something that works of your own. You should only really start defining your own profile if you have a particularly unique use case that is not well documented by the community. And it would be particularly useful if you could contribute that use case back. I'll show you how in a bit. My first stopping off point when I'm thinking about building a new profile is going to be the XAPI Vocab Pub website. This is pretty new, xapi.vocab.pub. And on here are some of the basic concepts that ADL believes will be useful for most people using the Experience API. Right away, we can see that we're going to have verbs, activity types, and context extensions, result extensions, things that look a bit like my document. That's no coincidence. These are the key features of a profile. If I browse in verbs, what I'm going to actually look here is all of these verbs have been predefined in a profile of some sort already. So scrolling down the page, there's, there's quite a lot here. I need to think a little bit about what verbs would be most appropriate to describe the activities I've got here. So first of all, I've got registration, learner registration email sent. So the action that I'm trying to describe is that of a learner being assigned a course or something like that. So the best thing I can do here is take a little, little look. I'll, I'll search here. Um, I'm going to search for assigned. So actually, I've got one. Uh, assigned has been defined here in, in this um, and what we've got is the URL in this case this is the unique identifier for this verb assigned and a description indicates that the actor has assigned the object to the target that doesn't actually sound like my use case 
Um, that sounds to me like some sort of drag and drop or something like that. I actually do have more results that are found here, so let me search through those. So I've got another one here, was assigned. So this is a slightly different verb ID, and the, the verb display name is was-assigned. Indicates that the actor was given or required access to an object. That's not bad. That's pretty approximate, I believe, to what I'm talking about here. So if I go in here and take a little more detail about this, this shows a little bit more detail about other related things that are related to this verb. And at this point, was assigned is actually, uh, if I click on it here, I can copy the, uh, the link that's behind it, copy link address. That will give me the unique identifier. So I'm going to go with this for the sake of time. I'm going to paste in here. That's going to be my verb. Was assigned is going to be my verb for this. Where, so what's it been assigned to? Well, it would be probably the URL of the course um, that I'm doing here. So I'm kind of just copying from above, but in this case, it's gonna be HTTPS, beta, curator, the, the URL of the course. Type, uh, what is this? Is it, uh, a, a, what are you being assigned to at this point? Well, it, it's probably the, a course. So again, if I flick back a couple on the registry, you'll notice that activity types are here as well. There's a whole lot of things here. So there's, there's a huge list of activity types. Course is uh, going to appear a whole bunch of times. So there'll be blocks, playlists, modules, lessons, uh, all sorts of definitions of a course, as well as the actual definition of a course. So activity type, a course represents an amount of content that's published and registered for with the purpose of gaining completion. That sounds like the sort of thing that I am going for at this point. I am actually registering for a course. Now, of course, if I use the same activity type for all of my courses, it becomes very easy for me to use the LRS in such a way that I can get all activity types where that equals course. It gives me an easy thing to search on. Parent would give me some context, uh, a grouping, a category, a tag, or something like that. I'm not actually going to, to put anything here on this one. I don't think that's appropriate right now. And there is also no results. So I'm just going to type null across those two. So that's my first XAPI statement starting to be built. And I'm going to work down my list. The next one, learner completes the registration form, learner logs on. And I'm going to keep going back to that vocab list to see what I can do to fill these things out. People have already done this for you, of course, and, and there are published profiles in the world. So here's an example of the GitHub repository from ADLNet that shows XAPI authored profiles. So there's a bunch of different profiles, one for video, one for activity streams, which is a bit of a catch-all for most of the things you might want to do. And if you take a look inside them here, this profile will define all of the different verbs and some of the activity types that could be associated with this sort of profile. This is quite a good resource for you to go from. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. In fact, you shouldn't reinvent the wheel when it comes to creating your own XAPI profile. Adopt those that have gone before or adapt those that have already been published. Only ever create as a point of last resort. I hope this has been a helpful video. You'll find links to this document and to the ADL websites in the description for the video. Thank you for your time.